First things first, and safety is always first. When working on any job site, you may be required to wear protective gear, such as a hard hat, safety vest, safety glasses, and steel-toed boots. This particular job site does not require those, so we'll not, we will not be wearing those in today's shoot. When installing refrigeration equipment, obviously you have an evaporator inside, and then you're gonna have a condensing unit outside. So wall penetrations must be made to connect the line sets from the evaporator to the condenser. Those holes will be made with a traditional hole saw, such as this. We will show you how that's done. As you can see, a good, nice, clean cut inside and out. That will come in very, very handy later once we push through the insulation and then seal this penetration. When running your line sets and cutting your copper, I always use tube cutters. Do not use a hacksaw or any type of saw blade as it will actually add contaminants into the inside of the copper. Um, it'll be shavings, etc. Another very good practice is once you get it cut with the tubing cutters, use a reamer. Use the reamer to actually go inside the copper and get the burr. Turn it upside down to where the debris actually falls out of the copper to keep contaminants to a minimum. Once you have it reamed out, cut smooth and reamed out, use some sandpaper. Go around the outside. This will clean the copper and give a good tight joint when it's brazed. Notice when brazing, you should always hook a nitro nitrogen line up so that it cleans the inside of the copper and it doesn't contaminate the system. This should be utilized each time you have a braze joint. Now we're looking at placement of the evaporator. It should be a minimum of 16 inches off the back wall to allow appropriate airflow to cool down the entire box. As you can see, this one is set at roughly 16 and a half inches. Another thing to look at is if the, whatever the height of the evaporator, this one is 14 and a half inches, uh, you want to be absolutely no less than that off the back wall, and that should, for the most part, allow appropriate airflow. We already have this system piped in. Um, we have now put 150 pounds of nitrogen. This will uh, give us two benefits. One benefit is we're definitely looking to make sure that the system is leak free. So we'll let that pressure set on the system for a couple of hours to ensure that there are no leaks in the copper tubing. It will also help with drying out the system. Once we get through with the pressure test, we'll put the system on a vacuum pump and pull the system down to a 500 micron vacuum level before charging. You notice these lines are, are insulated. They should be insulated with one inch rubber tex insulation. This particular system is reverse cycle defrost. So both the liquid line and the suction line should be insulated. One thing to note for appropriate oil return for the compressor is you need a trap in the lowest point of your suction line. This will allow the oil to trap in the trap itself instead of other areas in the system. Once you get to the roof, you should then put an inverted trap. This will alleviate the possibility of the oil being able to drain back down once it actually breaks the rooftop. Once you pass the inverted trap, the remainder of the suction line should slope back toward the compressor. All right, we have passed the pressure test. It held fine. And now we've got the system on a vacuum pump. You'll need to let the vacuum pump run until the micron gauge gets down to and stabilizes at 500 or, or below. Typically between three and 500 microns, you would have a good clean system with no moisture and very, very minimal contaminants. This is very important with the installation of these systems. Now we have our initial charge in the system. We've turned the system on. The box is starting to pull down in temperature. You can see that the, the controller display is reading out 
uh, that it is actually in the refrigeration mode, REFR, -R -E -R RMTP, which is room temp, and the room temp is minus 1.7 degrees. Another quick thing to, to make note of is the drain line and the drain line heater. Notice that the drain line is very well insulated with no less than one inch insulation all, and heated the entire time while it is in the freezer. Notice the slope, it should have at least an eighth of an inch fall per foot. This one very well exceeds that, so it should drain very, very well. This particular walk-in is a freezer-cooler combo. It has one evaporator in the freezer and it has one evaporator in the cooler. It does share a common drain line. As you notice, the drain line is trapped on the inside of the cooler. There must be a trap between the cooler and the freezer evaporator to keep the moisture down inside the freezer. At the end of the drain line, on the exterior of the box, it will have another trap. That will alleviate the possibility of the cooler actually pulling moisture into it as well. Right. On the piping, on the suction line piping, make sure that you have a P-trap at the lowest point before the riser goes to the roof. Hi, here we are up top on the roof. A couple of key things. When installing Versicle defrost master built system, the liquid line must be upsized one size from normal calculation. The, ca the normal calculation for the BTU load on this particular system would call for a half inch liquid line. As you can see, the liquid line has been upsized to a 5 8. This is to allow for a full complete defrost during the reverse cycle defrost cycle. Another key thing with these systems, it, ha it has a floating head pressure. There is no need to clear the sight glasses when charging these systems. A mechanical system such as this would probably take 25, anywhere from 25 to 35 pounds of refrigerant to have a full charge, whereas this particular system would be fully charged anywhere from seven to nine pounds. You want to start your charge off very small. We have our charge, charging system set up. We start it off with about a five pound initial charge. We will then cut the system on and let it run and start to pull temp. And then we will calculate the superheat or view the superheat on the master controller to ensure we have a complete charge. Once we start getting close, we will be adding refrigerant in half pound to one pound increments to dial the charge in to be at the most efficient level. Note the nice inverted traps once we come through the pitch pocket. This is the pitch pocket. That is a typical pitch pocket that you'll see at a job site. Suction lines are coming up. They have inverted traps at the top and then the remainder of the suction line slopes down toward the compressor to help with the oil return for the compressor. Note that both the suction line and the liquid line both are insulated. Both lines must be insulated when utilizing a reverse cycle defrost system. Okay, we've got our initial charge in. Running about 14 pounds on the suction, which is good. We're running about 126, 127, 128 on the head pressure. That sounds like it is very, very low. But once again, this system utilizes a floating head pressure. And as long as you have a temperature difference between the ambient and the discharge temperature, you are dissipating heat. Right now it's about 50 degrees outside. When I look at the PT chart, find 50 degrees, I'm adding, adding about 10 degrees at, right now. That puts me at 60 degrees for, uh, gives me 124.2 PSI. I'm running 127.4 on my head pressure right now, which is about 61 and a half degrees. So I've got about 11 and a half degree differential right now. The compressor at this point in time is probably pulling half the amps as a normal system would, which is considerably saving on the electrical bill. We have about five pounds of refrigerant in the freezer, and we have three pounds of refrigerant in the cooler. We feel like we're gonna have to add just a little bit more to the freezer to get it dialed in, but the cooler should run fine with only three pounds of 404 refrigerant in this system, utilizing the floating head pressure. As you can see, we're getting a little bit of frost back on the suction line. That is completely normal. 
and ensures that we're getting good superheat back to our compressor, but we're not flooding the compressor. The cooler, as you'll see, it'll only be sweating and very little, very little frost will ever be seen on the cooler suction line. Okay, here we are. We're dialing in the charge. We feel like we have it where we need to be, and now we're double checking. And to do that, you want to check the superheat and the valve positioning on the control board. To do that, press the right button. The VARI is displayed, and press enter. RMTP will be displayed, and press the down button. SUPH is the superheat of the system. Press enter. Right now our system is running 8.8, 8.7 degrees of superheat. We have a set point of 10 degrees, so it's holding it very, very close. So now we want to double check our valve position. Press the back button. SUPH is displayed again. Press the down button. Press the down button. Press the down button. Press the down button. Press the down button until you see VALV. At that point in time, press enter. You can see the percentage of our valve opening is 15 to 16 percent. That is right in range of a completely fully charged system. You want to see it between 10 and 25 percent open. It has a 1596 step electronic expansion valve. So when it's 10 percent open, it's open roughly 160 steps. To put the system into a manual defrost, press the back button until it goes to normal mode. It's showing now that it's, the room temperature is 36.7 degrees and it is in the refrigeration mode. To put into a manual defrost, press the arrow to the right. until the display M N M D is displayed and press enter. When you see that M C T L is displayed, press and hold enter. It shows that it is in the refrigeration mode. Press enter again. Now D E F R is displayed. The cooler utilizes an off-cycle defrost, so the fans will continue to run during defrost. We're going to do the same check in the freezer to verify operations. All right, so now we're going to verify the operation of the freezer very quickly. So the superheat is about 13 degrees, 13.4 degrees. The system just cut back on, so it's not uncommon for it to be a little bit high, but you can see that it's steadily trying to drop, or was, now it's down to 12.8. So back. Here we see our valve position is actually about 50%. So we probably will have to add refrigerant to this system to complete the charge. We'll do that and then recheck the settings. To put the system into a defrost, go to MENMD, press enter. The password comes up, press enter. The password is 0002, and press enter. And hold. ECMCTL, press enter. REFR, press enter and hold. Now have, we have initiated a manual defrost. You see in the freezer that the fans stop blowing. At this point in time up top, the reversing valve will switch and it will send the discharge gas directly to the evaporator to defrost the coil from the inside out. This process typically takes about five or six minutes. So it is very quick and it is very, very efficient. A couple things to note. Notice the drain line that it's insulated, it's also heated, and it's sloped very well toward the cooler. Another thing to note, all penetrations, whether they be electrical or refrigeration penetrations, for, or penetrations for the refrigeration lines, they must be sealed with foam on the inside and outside. To seal penetrations, spray foam works very, very well. 
notice that it's cleaned off now? You want to make sure that there's absolutely no light coming through and that the foam completely expands and gets a good seal. If it's not sealed properly, the air infiltration will cause sweating inside the cooler and it will cause frost buildup inside the freezer. As you notice on the cooler side, we do have a trap in the drain line. It should be trapped in the cooler and the heater should actually exit from the freezer into the cooler to ensure that the drain line does not freeze. At the end of the drain line, at the exterior of the walk-in, there will also be another peat trap. The reason for the peat traps is the outside will keep moisture coming to the cooler. The peat trap between the cooler and the freezer will alleviate the possibility of moisture being sucked into the freezer from the cooler. That is a very, very important step. Okay, here we are back up top. We did have to add a little bit more refrigerant to the freezer. We've got a total of eight pounds in it now. It is running just as it should. We have a total of three pounds in the cooler. That is a fraction of the amount of a traditional mechanical system. A couple of things that I want to point out again when installing and starting up these systems. The refrigerant amount will be very, very, very minimal compared to a traditional system. The line size of the liquid line has to be upsized one size to accommodate the reverse cycle defrost. The low pressure control must be set using a gauge. The cutout should be between 3 and 5 PSI and the cut in should be between 20 and 24 PSI. Thank you for watching today's video.